Ladies and gentlemen, today is a monumental day for the channel. Why, you ask? Literally nobody asks I, I know, why. it's just an expression. Just get to it, man. Anyway, it marks a monumental day for the channel because we are diving back into the backstory of Call of Duty Black Ops. Over the years, we have dove into stories like Frank Woods, Alex Mason, and some of these stories have been some of the most popular videos on this channel. But recently, with the new trailer coming out for Black Ops Cold War and us recently finding out that Hudson or Jason Hudson is going to be making a return to the game I thought now is a better time than any to dive back into the backstory of Black Ops and today we dive into a character that we haven't yet looked at but has a really deep entrenched story with the Black Ops universe and I, you could argue that he's actually one of the most important characters in the Black Ops universe. Now on top of talking about his entire backstory throughout all of the games he's in we are also going to discuss how he can fit into the new Black Ops game Black Ops Cold War. So today I present to you the full story of Jason Hudson. So as far as Hudson goes, he's actually one of the characters that we have the most backstory on. So Hudson was born in Washington, D.C. on March 26th, 1932. He was a member of the U.S. Army's 101st Airborne Division and served in the Korean War until he was honorably discharged in the year 1955. At this time, he left the military and enrolled in Georgetown University with a double major in psychology and political science. Right out of Georgetown University, he was recommended to the CIA from the Office of Strategic Services. And shortly after this time, this is when we begin to see Hudson's story, and that is at the beginning of Call of Duty Black Ops 1. So what you have to understand about Black Ops 1 is that it's told through the memories of Alex Mason. At the very beginning of the game, Alex Mason is being interrogated to find out the numbers that are stuck inside his head. You see, early on in the game, you hear about a mission in Verkuta Prison. During this time, numbers were implanted in Alex Mason's head, and we eventually find out that it's essentially a brainwashing sequence. We'll dive more into that later. But through the memories of Alex Mason is when we first see Hudson. You were cleared for duty and summoned to the Pentagon. Jason Hudson was my new handler. This is it. Why the Pentagon? Hudson couldn't tell me. He didn't have clearance. Your convoy's ready, sir. Welcome to the Pentagon. So right away you find out that Hudson is Mason's handler, the one who makes sure that Mason does what the government wants him to do. And in this, you also find out that he has connections in very high places. Secretary McNamara. Your reputation precedes you, sir. Step on it. Now, quickly, the secretary gives you your first, essentially, target, who is none other than Nikita Dragovich. This is a character who is one of the people who brainwashed you in Verkuta Prison. Now, after this, you go on to meet the president, reinforcing the idea of how high Hudson actually is in the CIA. He has connections all the way up to the president. Now, the first official mission that you see Hudson on alongside Mason is on July 21st, 1968 in Vietnam. This mission was to go into Vietnam and investigate the Soviets' involvement. They were specifically looking for the Russian defector, who, as we know, ends up being Alex Mason, as he is the one who is brainwashed. Now, during this mission, Mason, Woods, and Hudson all get thrown from the vehicle, and Hudson gets pretty badly injured. Mason takes it upon himself to be the one to take him back to safety. Hudson was down in case Sound was under siege. But like with Weaver, you risked your life to save him. Hudson was a fucking ice cube. That's my life, the bastard. The next time we see Hudson, you actually play as Hudson and you go to Kowloon and interrogate someone named Dr. Daniel Clark. You're playing alongside Gregory Weaver and essentially your job here is to interrogate Clark, find out where Frederick Steiner is, and get out of there. And you eventually do so, and you're told that Steiner is in Mount Yamantau. So Weaver, Hudson, and Alpha Team head to Mount Yamantau where they're searching for Steiner. But as they find out, Dragovich and Steiner have escaped from here before they got there. But before they leave, they find out where they are. Steiner is at Rebirth Island, the exact same place where Mason is going. And at this point, the race is on who can get there first, Hudson or Steiner. 
Now, you may be wondering why they're trying to stop Steiner. Basically, they're trying to weaponize Nova 6 gas, and the only person that's able to stop it is Steiner, or the defector, who has the secret number sequence. Now, by the time Weaver and Hudson get there, this is what they witness. Mason! We have to stop him now! Damn, it's bulletproof! Mason, what are you doing? We need him alive! Help Stand me. up! Stand up! My name is Victor Reznov, and I will have my revenge! Mason, no! I'm fine! Check Steiner! He's dead. What about Reznov, the defector? We need to find him. We won't. He was never here. I didn't believe it till I saw it with my own eyes. What did they do to you in Varkuda, Mason? So the big realization here is, first of all, the defector is none other than Mason. And now that Steiner's dead, the only way that they're able to stop the Nova 6 attack is with the numbers. And the only person that has the numbers is Mason. So this interrogation that's been going on throughout the entire time of Black Ops 1 has actually been taken out by Mason's handler, Hudson. Get out of here, Weaver. Tell them I failed. You want to die with him? Your choice. Damn it! Why can't you remember? Reznov's dead, Mason. Do you hear me? He's dead! Weaver's right. We're out of time. The Russians fucked you up. I know you. You're not a traitor. Now, there's not too much more to dive into in Black Ops 1, but a brief summary. Eventually, Mason ends up remembering the numbers, which takes Hudson, Weaver, and Mason to the Rasulka, which ends up being the launch site for the Nova 6 gas. And by the end of the game, they take him down. They take down Dragovich, stop the Nova 6 from launching, and poof, the world is saved. Or at least it's saved for now, until the events of Black Ops 2. So similar to how Black Ops 1 was told through Alex Mason's memories, Black Ops 2 is told through Frank Wood's memories. Now, essentially for this video, we're only going to be going through half of Black Ops 2's story, the part of the story that takes place in the past. So Hudson's story in Black Ops 2 begins with Alex Mason retired from the CIA and spending some time with his son. As a helicopter comes in, Hudson gets out and explains to him the current situation. Lieutenant Colonel North, NSC. You already know Jason Hudson. What are you doing here? Yesterday, Sergeant Woods led a covert team to take out an arms smuggling ring in Angola. This morning, we lost contact. So go get him, CIA. Why are you here? Castro and the Russians are all over Angola. We can't go in. The CIA have buried the mission. Woods and his squad no longer exist. We got whatever you need, Mason. Name it. David can stay with Jenny, like before. She loves having him, he'll be fine. Dad, you said you'd never go back to the army. You promised me. It's Uncle Woods, son. He'd do it for me. So the very next mission that Hudson is on is to save Frank Woods. He goes alongside Mason to Angola and ends up finding Frank Woods inside of a shipping container. As they find out, the person to do this is none other than Raul Menendez, a weapon and drug smuggler who has a deep-seated background and basically a rivalry with Frank Woods. Their next step is to track down Raul Menendez, and that's exactly what they do. They go through Afghanistan, and then they go to Nicaragua, and this is where things start to get dicey. They go in with the help of someone named Manuel Noriega. We'll get to him in a little bit. He essentially brings our characters to the compound where Raul Menendez is. And as they break into the compound, Woods essentially goes into a rage. But at that point, Hudson figures out that Raul Menendez is no longer inside the compound. But it's too late. 
Woods lets off a grenade and it goes into the same room as Raul Menendez's sister, Josefina, and the grenade ends up killing her. This then further fuels the hatred that Raul Menendez has towards Frank Woods. This brings us to Panama. Mason, Woods, and Hudson plan to track down and take out Menendez. However, Menendez has other plans. Noriega is still working for him, and Noriega is leading them into a trap. And as we know, what ends up happening is instead of Woods shooting Menendez, he ends up shooting his best friend, Mason. And as I mentioned, this ends up being a trap. Raul Menendez already has Mason's son, David Mason, taken hostage. On top of that, Hudson, Woods, and now Alex Mason as well. And this is how things go down. Your best friend, Alex Mason, is dead. By your own hand. Do you understand why? He was gonna kill David. Because you must suffer, as I have suffered. Now one more must die. You, Woods, Oh, David, make a decision now, or in ten seconds, you're all dead. Woods, I can't. I have two kids. They... Fuck! Okay, me! Do it! Do it! And just like that, that is the end of Jason Hudson. But the weird part about this is we now know that he is going to be in the next Black Ops game, Black Ops Cold War. So the question from here is how is that possible? So there's two technical possibilities. The first of which is that the next game takes place before Black Ops 1. I think this is rather rare, as we talked about in his backstory, before the events of Black Ops 1, he was in school, and before that, he was in the Korean War. In the leaks about Black Ops Cold War, there has been no mention of the Korean War, it's basically all having to do with the Soviet Union. The second option is between Black Ops 1, Black Ops 1 takes place between 1968 and 1972. Whereas Black Ops 2, the events there where you save Frank Woods, don't take place until 1986, which means there's 14 years in between where Hudson is still working in the CIA. Also, there was clearly a bunch of missions between that time because at the beginning of Black Ops 2, Hudson says, David can stay with Jenny, like before. She loves having him, he'll be fine. And obviously, David Mason wasn't born during the events of Black Ops 1, so it means there's something big that went on between that time. And believe it or not, we actually have a lot more information on this, and just brace yourself because I'm about to blow your mind. So, in this intel found within Black Ops 2, it talks about something called Operation Cherubitis. I don't know if I'm saying that right. But it took place in the year 1978, in that time period that we were just talking about. And during this time, the CIA still believed that the numbers were in Alex Mason's head, and they worried that he would become, once again, another Soviet asset and cause large problems. So that alone could be part of the story of Black Ops Cold War. But on top of this, the CIA planned on assassinating fascinating not only Alex Mason, but Hudson and Weaver as well. But what gets even crazier is in the last paragraph of this intel is that the soldier assigned to carry out these orders is an SAS operative known as Jonathan Blank. Who do we know by the first name Jonathan and their last name is a very short blank? That is right, Captain John Price. But let's hold up for a second because that's not about Hudson at all. If you'd like to see a future video where I explain that one to you, all you gotta do is hit that like button, and yes, that can explain a crossover between the Modern Warfare universe and the Black Ops universe. But as far as Hudson goes, how he will fit into the future game, how it appears as though the best way that this could work is if this next game, Black Ops Cold War, is gonna take place between 
Black Ops 1, and Black Ops 2 in those 14 years that we don't have these characters accounted for, including Hudson, because we know the whole time he was still a part of the CIA. But ladies and gentlemen, that is the full story of Jason Hudson. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, it's always appreciated if you hit that like button. If you're new to the channel, like what you see, want to stay up to date on all my videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button, make sure you turn notification on, let me know what you think of all of this down in the comments, and until next time, peace out. We are, we are reaching for the stars.